your needs according to his timing, according to his riches. There's no deadline. There's no thermometer on the wall. That's all carnal. That's all fleshly. That's all worldly. And, and what we need to remember is that if it's God's work, it's his problem. <laughs> if it's the Lord that has called you into the ministry, whatever it is, hey, don't pressure people. Don't think that that's the answer. If I just pressure more of the, and put more of the pressure on the people, that'll, that'll get it. No, read Romans 15, 27. Read Galatians 6, 6. Read 1 Corinthians 9, 11. Um, these, these are the attitudes you're to have about giving to the Lord. Um, but it's very tragic, and, I, and it's worth pointing out, that as soon as Jehoiada dies, when he's off the scene, when Jehoiada's gone, and it's interesting, he lived a long time, 130 years old. God was giving Joash, this young king, an opportunity to really be a strong leader for your and, and be be able to lead without Jehoiada, the priest, holding your hand the whole way. And he couldn't do it. And and sadly, no one can force you. You can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make it drink. You can lead someone to the Word of God. You can't make them read. They'll just stare at it all day, right? And it's sad. But I... I you think about those who start out great but finish so poorly. Saul was another one who had a great start and just finished poorly, sadly. Just what a grief. And the, the way that I hope you finish, the way to finish well. It's not by my own might or power or if I just can, can be strong enough and faithful. Listen, it has nothing to do with my faithfulness or my obedience or my work. It's all His grace. The way to finish well is by grace. By grace you are saved. And this is, is, is it's by faith, through faith. And that faith even is a gift. Nothing you earn. His love is so different. The song that I wrote, All other loves want something in return. But the way He loves... It is something that you just can't earn. The way that He loves, why does He love you and why do we love Him? Because He first loved us. It's, it's so amazing how simple but profound it really is. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because He first loved me. And truly, when you fight, as we read this morning in the little book of Jude, it's the Lord rebuke you. It's not in my own might, or my own strength, or how loud I can yell at the devil, but rather singing sweet songs of victory, singing praise it drives the wickedness out. It drives Satan crazy when he hears you singing 
Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. I mean, it's just incredible the weapons of our warfare. They are not carnal. They're not the worldly. They're not the ways of the world. Look at David and Goliath. <laughs> you look at the examples throughout Scripture, and it's so incredible. It's powerful stuff. The Lord is going to be honored, lifted up. So sing out. Sing out to Him. Amen. For He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. For you are Lord. You are Lord. You have risen from the dead and you are Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is 